Now, on the Mercedes-Benz car, you have 10,000 points where they welded it, 10,000 points. On the Mercedes-Benz car, before it can be called Mercedes-Benz engine, it must have run on the bench for 1,000 hours. That's a company-based test to, you know, to see if that engine meets their own company quality. But what Jesus was going to encounter in the wilderness was not a company-based test. It was an outsourced test to devils. Oh, you are, you are not with me. To demons. And, and there, is no, there is no understanding where they will come from. If it's a com company-based test, it's a control test. Okay, we're testing for tensile strain, tensile stress, capacity. Outsourced. Go and be tempted by the devil. And I don't want to take you go deeply. I'm just trying to show you possibilities that can occasion seasons of darkness. And because in the situation of a test, God's endorsement is behind that test. So, the devil has authority. I know you don't, you don't, uh, you are not with me. He has, he has authority to run that test according to his own specification. And God would not put you up for test if he doesn't know that the capacity of what he has built inside of you surpasses anything that the devil can throw at you. So, if you see the kind of test that God can allow around your life, it is suggestive of how you have attained before him. Because he is the regulator of temptation. The Bible says that he will not allow you to be tempted more than you have the capacity to be. And yet, in that temptation, he will be expecting you to stay sensitive because he's going to make a way of escape. So, so, so he regulates the temptation. He regulates what comes to Darion, what comes to, to Henry, what comes to, to, to Davis. He knows your frame, your capacity, what you can bear, what you can survive. The season of darkness. I pray that our eyes will be open. In the spirit, we'll be able to see the way of escape that he has made available. Second reason for the season of darkness is um, a time, a time where uh, uh, a season of darkness can be a result of issues that are obtainable in the courts of heaven. And that's the story of Job. The thing, the operating system behind what came upon him took place in heaven. And Satan was allowed as a guest to come discuss Job. It was a meeting for the sons of God, and all the sons of God came, and they were there. Satan was also available. And then it was as if God forgot the agenda of the meeting and put Job on the spotlight. It was as if his conversation with Job became, was the real reason for which the meeting was called. So there are issues that go on in the courts of heaven. Sometimes God is bragging about you. Sometimes he wants an accelerated promotion, so he needs to bring Satan. Stay with me. Just stay with me. Stay with me. Sometimes God might want to facilitate an accelerated promotion in your life, so he invites Satan quickly. Say, hey, can you come? Oh, there's somebody here. <laughs> and you know Satan is bad on Monday, bad on Tuesday, bad on Wednesday, bad on Thursday. So he will come with accusations. He comes. Ah. He, he doesn't have any good thing to say about you. So when, when he stands before God, he now brings his data. Notice that Satan did not need to reach out to a data bank to bring out Job's profile. Right on the spot, he brought. And he also revealed his oscillatory motion of how he has been walking up and down to and fro the earth. So he had, he passed your house, passed your office, passed your compound. He has your data. So the moment he receives authority from that layer, he knows what to do, where to touch. Seasons of darkness. Hey, hallelujah. I know you don't like darkness, but you see, if you, if, you, if, you, if you stay long enough, the day will go dark. The day will stay long enough. And there are a lot of things that God achieves through these seasons. One of which is, is a, uh, it's, it's, it's an avenue for God to build stature in the lives of his people. When you see someone growing in the spirit, know that he contends with so many things. And the way God even designed it is that even the things he has secured for us in the spirit are not automatic because Jesus died for the whole world. If, if it were automatic, that would have been something to implement in the Middle East, implement salvation in the Middle East. But you need to do something to enter into the economy of grace. God has already destined you for something, but he said, begin to contend with, for battle. With them in battle so that you can enter into the things that God has ordained. Are you, are you still with me? I know you don't like battles. You want, you want to just stay, then you are not ready for the real life. Because the day of half measures and talk is over. We are at the end of days and light and darkness will, will just be different by a very thin line. Number three, one of the reasons for which a season of darkness might come uh, can also be an outright illegal intention of the devil to bring a barricade around your life. Outright, illegitimate. Hallelujah. That even if you are praying, darkness will come. If you are fasting, it will come. I went to preach somewhere. There's a place in Nigeria called Guapalada. So, um, so many people have prophesied to us. We had, we had two children and we were good with two children. We had stopped everything about giving birth and all of that. And then senior ministers began to call me, saying, you are in error. God has given you more children than you have. They, what's, what's that? And then you go here, you see another senior. This, the senior ministers I'm talking about are people that have worked with God for so long. You need to have a good reason not to listen to them. So, and my wife had been saying, uh -uh. 
So we now decided to have a child. So she took him. I went for a crusade. I went for that crusade. I was so powerful in the crusade. Jesus, so powerful in that crusade. I finished preaching the second night and the demons were casted out there, went to fight my wife. Because she had a dream and saw this creature with four horns and attempting to ram at her womb. She removed the first horn, removed the second horn, and then she third horn, it was one horn left, and then she woke up. So it means it's inconclusive. And in spiritual things, when you have something that is inconclusive, <laughs> make sure you don't conclude your spiritual work. May the Lord give you understanding. Yeah. So it was inconclusive. And then um, 30 minutes after the inconclusive dream, she began to spot, and that was how we lost that child. She, they were wheeling her into the theater when she called me faint, as if she was going to die. And she said, whatever you do, don't come back. Go for that crusade. Go for that crusade. So in the name of my wife, I went that, that day. <laughs> but you know what? As powerful as the crusade was, we lost that child. Well, no need to tell you of what God told me when I went to inquire. Why, why is this? I, I've been running along for your name. And I know you have enough power reserved in your arm to avert this situation. All right? So no need to bother you with what he told me. It was a time of darkness. I, I, I was not the one carrying the child, so it was easy for me to move on. But uh, the one that was carrying the child, in fact, my wife didn't talk for like some days. Jesus, I had to, now, the prayer point changed. I had to start praying for her and all of that. And before the Lord now. So it, it was not, a, it, we didn't choose that that season would be like that. But it came, even though we were serving a living God. Are you with me? So what this session is about is to give us insight into how to manage those seasons and actually how to migrate through them into the potentials that that passage creates. All right, let's do something quickly. Something quickly, then I will tell you one or two things. This is what I found as an intercessor. Someone give me Acts chapter 2, verse 15. Another person give me Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Another person give me Acts chapter 10, verse 3. Another person give me Acts chapter 10, verse 9. These scriptures that I asked us to open are scriptures that revealed moments where something from God's realm came into our own realm. Right? So I want us to do an investigation of the timing. Is that clear? You know, when I was in the oil industry, we did a lot of, we, we brought a lot of cargo on uh, vessels, on tanker vessels, so I was offshore almost always, and we're doing that stuff. That's when I understood the, the dynamics of tide, tide, because in order for us to take, fiscalize and take inventory, um, the tide must be at its peak, so that our calculations will not be wrong. That's where I, I stumbled on one of the tools, which is the tidal chart, and I got a lot of insight from that. But, are you, are you with me? Who, who is reading the first scripture? Oh my God. I was asking for help, that was why I said it should. Yes? Hey, 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 wait, which scripture are you reading? No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Wait, I'm coming. Let me be sure that I give you the right scriptures. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Good. Yes, 2 verse 15. All right, let's start again. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. The third hour. Now, can we, what does that mean, the third hour of the day? What does it mean? Do you have a Bible that gives us insight into what time we're talking about? What? 9 a.m. So you write, write 9 a.m. Yes, next scripture. So this third hour of the day was a time that the Holy Spirit came down on the day of Pentecost. Is that clear? Right. We're talking about praying without ceasing. That's, what I'm, that's where I'm going. Yes? Who has the second scripture? Acts 10.3. 10, At about three in the afternoon, this Cornelius. Cornelius had an encounter with an angel, and the time of that encounter, according to human timing, was what? Three in the afternoon, that's 3 p.m. Okay, so we have the first one's what? 9 a.m. Then we have something for 3 p.m. Yes? Who is reading another scripture there? The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray. He went up on the housetop to pray. About the sixth hour. About the sixth hour. What time is that? 12 noon. That was when he had the encounter that something from heaven descended and all of that and all of that. and all. So look at that very well. You see we have 12 noon. We have 9. We have 3. So it's a three, three, three hours interval. Good. So this is the technology. You want to shift, you want to move the hand of darkness back? You must start 12 midnight. You do 12 to 1, you do 3 to 4, you do 6 to 7, you do 9 to 10, and you continue running like that. If you do that, you will migrate. Keep that routine, keep that routine. Something from God's realm will come into that cycle. It's guaranteed, it's something I do. When I notice that hell has broken loose, 12 to 1. I can, if, if the anointing is still on me for prayer, I can continue. But my contract is 12 to 1. Then I can go and sleep. And then do what? 3 to 4. If the anointing is on me, I will allow it to run. Then I, I move again. I move again. 
you will see God's hand will come into that cycle. Maintain that cycle. His hand will come. That, that's how we receive angelic visitations. Create a time that is based on this routine and God will come into it. The heavens will be open. The Holy Ghost will come down and you can hear the, 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 the voice of God clearly or God will send you an, an angel. Angelic intervention is occasioned by this continuous prayer cycle. Prayer was made without ceasing from the church. So one of the indicators of uh, the season of darkness is when you find untimely deaths of people that are related to you. It's an indication. It's a sign. The Bible said that they took James and killed him with a sword. Uh, as an intercessor, as a watchman, there are several indications, several things that suggest that darkness is beginning to gather momentum. As a watchman, there are things that you need to set your gaze upon, one of which is beds and deaths. If you study your Bible, you will see that many beds coincided with God's prophetic agenda. In fact, when he said that the Lord himself will show you a sign in the book of Isaiah chapter 9, it was about a bet. A virgin shall conceive, a virgin shall bring forth a son. Beds, you see. And deaths, especially when they are untimely, is suggestive of the fact that there is an economy of darkness that is trying to spread itself around you. The Bible says that Herod, he rose, he stretched forth his hands, and the purpose of stretching forth his hand was to vex certain of the church. So there are times when Satan stretches forth his hands to vex people in the house of God. I'm still in one now. I'm still in one. Before I came here. Oh, you must have sought. Okay, let me, let me. How did he start? He went to preach in Cameroon. The hand of God. You know, God is the one that normally starts this thing. So, <laughs> hand of God was strong. All kinds of things were taking place. And my hotel room was overlooking the Atlantic Ocean. Right? So they felt, oh, you like this view. I said, if you're a spiritual man, you will know that the reason why you were kept there is for warfare. When I came back, I, you, you may not believe something, so no need for me to go into those details. I have a gift, I'm a seer. All right? So when I came back from the crusade the second night, there were spirits that were suspended on the water, trying to gain entrance into my room. But they couldn't come to land. And I was asking God, open my eyes so that I will see what is restraining these wicked spirits. Because while we were on the crusade, the power of God came upon the lady and the demon began to speak. I said all kinds of things that like, you are dead. You are, even right now, you are dead. <laughs> Normally what happens is when they say that, I love First, that's it. I generate laughter first. That's my first reaction. And that thing, please, anything that is talking, the thing will stop talking. Then I cast it out. So they, they promised that they were going to kill me. I went back to my room and I saw spirits suspended on the water. So when I asked God to open my eyes, I now saw the angel that was restrained. Oh, you might not know how real the spirit world is. It's more real than this one. This one cannot, it can last forever. Even if you leave it by itself and there's no Ukraine war, this one will disintegrate by itself. Because God never built this civilization on true foundations. He built it on water. If you know anything about civil engineering, uh, <laughs> you need dry land, table land, to build anything that will last. If you are going to reclaim land, there's a possibility that the water will... He built this one on water. That's why if you dig deep enough, you'll find water. It's a civil engineering flaw that suggests that this civilization is not a continuing country. I saw the powers of the kingdom of light restraining those forces. And they were dead till 3 a.m. Oh, many of you will go out and do something, maybe pray for some people, and then you come sleep. That's not how it is done. When you finish praying for people, you come out. Don't sleep earlier than 2 a.m. I'm telling you the way of the warrior. Because where our ministry is, is where witchcraft. Witchcraft is a culture. You know people have culture? The culture of where our ministry is, the people, is witchcraft. So I can tell you a thing or two about how to position yourself for victory. If you're still with me, say amen. amen. So we finished from Cameroon and came back home. And I started feeling the atmosphere was tense. I knew that Satan was trying to... Uh, and when you feel that the atmosphere is tense, what you do is drink prayer like water. Drink it on the streets. Drink it in the office. Leave your deck sometimes. Go to the restroom and... Uh, it's a mocha. <laughs> if after two days you still feel that the darkness is around, call your friends that are intercessors to, to join forces with you. That's how we do this thing. Don't ever stand alone. If you go beyond two days and it's not going, reach out. It means that um, the, the warfare is forged by a conclave. There, there's more than one person involved. So you will need more than one person in the solution. So we started praying, all kinds of prayer. Before I started the trip to Abuja, we had prayed for seven hours. Yes, we had prayed for seven hours and there was a release. So when I woke up in the morning, there was a little danger. Then it left. That means something will happen, but it's not a significant thing. I said, let's go to Abuja. So while we're now going on the way to Abuja to take the flight to come to London, a tanker that was full of petrol, 40,000 liters, now the brake failed and it was a slope. So we didn't need a running engine to kill us. The reason why I'm alive today is because God sent his angel and he, he used, the tanker used us to, to stop with that weight. He used, my Benz was what stopped the tanker. So 
the physical way of explaining why we are still alive phys physically is that we had luggage in the boot. So the luggage, the thing couldn't break. That's the physical way. But I know the spiritual side. Let me ask you, we prayed for seven hours. How come the tanker still, because it was orchestrated from the realm of the spirit, all right? And then the reason why, meanwhile, Satan did not arrange that just to bash my car. I hope you know. <laughs> that was not the intention. <laughs> that was not the intention. He arranged it. The vengeance was strong. My wife was at the back. Pastor Philip was at the back. Um, my wife's PA at the back. My daughter at the back. I was sitting in the front. Then the driver was this way. So imagine. Meanwhile, in our own intercession at home, one of our people at home saw three graves. He said, Pastor, I see three graves. Fresh. And there were three people at the back. It was already, it was already sealed in the spirit realm. A day before I traveled, the voice of the Lord came to me and said, send I know most of you don't know what Naira is. It's a kind of money, all right? <laughs> the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost came and he said, send one million Naira to your father-in-law. So I, I said, so when the crash took place and I came out of the car, he said, this is why I asked you to send one million Naira to your father-in-law. I said, I don't understand. Then he now quoted that scripture. Honor your father and your mother. That your days may be long. So if, <laughs> you are not with me. So, so, you mean if I didn't send that money? That was the principle God was activating. That was what he activated to provide the infrastructure for my deliverance. It was in that scripture and obeying the voice of God. So if we are talking about migrating from a season of darkness, I assure you I know a little about it. And that's not the first accident I've had. I've had worse accidents. Sometimes you, you drive the car thereafter like a bicycle. Are you still with me? <laughs> I said, if you are still with me, say amen. amen. That's a sign. A sign that darkness, untimely death. When you begin to see it around, don't sleep. Wake up. So he killed James. And then the second sign is captivity, unreasonable captivity. Unreasonable captivity. You begin to see it around, it's suggestive of a season of darkness. I don't know what kind of captivity you have been in. No, part of the reason this conference was set up was to ensure your migration comes to pass Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So the Bible says that the response of the church when Peter was apprehended was that they began to make prayers. Now, making of prayers, that's our strategy. And they made it without ceasing. A certain man of God that was in my city died. It was when he died that we knew what he was. We normally see him on pulpits and in the crusade. And he has, he, he does this crusade, annual crusade that is massive. But we never knew what he was until he died. We never knew the kind of covering that came over the city because he was alive. It is easy for you to compare yourself to somebody. Because your estimation of the person is what you see him do on the pulpit. Ministry is not pulpit stuff. It's a call to priesthood. It will swallow your life. It's a call to an altar. And the altar is a metaphor for sacrifice. So when this man died... Darkness began to come over our city gradually. I'm not saying we're not praying, no, but I'm saying that there was a capacity that that man had that made it easy for the territory. And many times, God knows that some people with capacity are about to be called home, and He begins to trouble other people to begin to take steps to migrate so that the kind of capacity they had in the spirit, the, 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 the outgoing generation, can be built in other functionaries that will still remain on ground so that darkness will not take advantage. Because I've seen cities like Benin. When a mighty apostle of God rose and he, he, he did damage to the kingdom of darkness. And when he was taken, there was nobody around that could command the kind of priesthood that he had. Guess what will happen? Darkness comes over the city and the darkness can linger. Oh, maybe there's a priest in your family, someone that is holding the fort. And many times this devil makes people not to like such people. He turns the hearts of people against such people that are holding the fort. Uh, if you understand spiritual things, you just know what is happening to you is the opposite of the truth. It will make people hate you if you're an intercessor. So you need, to, you need to love them beyond their misunderstanding and fulfill your ministry. This man was taken from our city. And when he was taken from our city, darkness began to come over the land. I was in final year when he died. And I never knew that God was going to send me to that city. But we had this small prayer group and God began to say that the time of darkness was coming and the darkness will last until a new light will rise from among us. Do you know that the most accurate, in my own opinion, and I speak as a man, okay? The most accurate word of God in that time was not on the big pulpit. The most accurate word of God was in little prayer groups where the Holy Spirit had liberty to express his heart. And God gave us that signal that the darkness was coming. But we could not imagine what measure of darkness God was talking about. The darkness was in the fact that somebody was about to be taken home 
and there was nobody on ground that understood the dynamics of the priesthood that brought light to the territory. And the moment this man was withdrawn from the scene, it was obvious that the things he had built in the spirit, there was no one that knew how to chart his course through the maze of the spiritual edifice that had been built by his life in the Lord. Satan took over everything. When I started my work life after campus, I got posted to the same city. Occultic pastors had taken over the pulpit, prophesying by divination. The spirit that was at work was what Apostle Paul called Python in the book of Acts chapter 16. Priesthoods that were serviced by immorality. All kinds of gimmicks, manipulations. And it was just a few years after the man died that the intensity of darkness was so heavy. And God began to speak to me. The reason why you were posted, because from my office they posted me to that my city again. The reason why we're posted here is so that you can, you can bear the candlelight. So we started praying. There were creatures like dwarfs that used to visit my house. I know you will not believe. You say, okay, this guy is from Africa. So. Ah, okay. Since you won't believe, let me leave my story. <laughs> creatures like dwarfs that used to visit them. That was a house that you might just see something. This house that I'm speaking about is sealed. You know what I mean by sealed? I, I assure you, sealed. And then I just came out of the room and saw a frog in my living room. All right, so I, I wanted to kill it. The thing just jumped and, and disappeared. I know you won't believe it. This, this, African, this African boy has come again. I said, what is this? So in order for me not to be afraid, I had to pray for like three hours. Then fate to be stirred up. Fate to be stirred up. I was very, very single then. So all I knew how to do was walk. And when I come back from work, prayer. I continue. I continue. My neighbors now saw me praying and started joining me. People heard my prayer and started joining. That was how we started the prayer that became the ministry I'm doing today. I was on my knees when Jesus walked through the wall and gave me six signs that would happen before the blanket of darkness over the city is taken away. Each one of them came to pass. And the last of which was that the airport that was grounded in my city, that it would become functional again. That was the last, that was the sixth one. And we followed it. And the more we gained ground with prayer, the more even, even the politics in the land shifted. Prior to that time, occultic people were the people sitting on that throne. And then we got a tongue talker to sit. It was because the atmosphere priesthood had made it possible. So the devil started losing ground. Even the, even the um, traditional schools, you know, we have something called, uh, we, have, we have offices, we have administrations built around our traditions. So we have chiefs. All the chiefs in that place are tongue talkers. It was intercession that created the atmosphere. And this is preparatory to something major that is about to happen in that city. That's how change takes place. Prayer was made. It was deliberate. It was conscious. Without ceasing of the church. Oh, you think it's a computer that will, that will change something? The, the analysis that you're doing. We did all of that analysis in the oil industry and the darkness that was still in the land. All our projections never came to pass. All our interpolations never came to pass because of the darkness that was in the land. It was obvious that God had made us a wealthy nation, but the world could not be seen. God never intended that anyone in that land would be a poor man, but the poverty is, is, is palpable. It is because of the darkness. So when we got this and we saw that you can break from a season of darkness as an individual, into light with more stature and more capacity. We now discover that you can do that territorially, that we can decide that London, Satan will pack from London. Yeah. Yes, we can decide. If you keep, if you keep sowing the seed of prayer, you'll begin to see the day star. The morning will begin to down. Oh, some things that were possible before in the land will no longer be possible because the priests of light had come into the territory. I came, I came to charge you up. We are in the season of a watchman. We are in the season of the watchman. Yes, you're eating. You eat chicken, eat chicken. No, wake up. Wake up. It's time for us to migrate. Great things are determined by heaven, but it will take watchmen to download them. I've seen the power of prayer. If the power of prayer is in its consistency. Stay consistent. It may not make sense. Just keep the routine. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep striking. Keep striking. Keep striking. Keep striking. Keep striking. And things will break. I saw the darkness of my city break. I left Supernatural Shift 2020. Went back home. The first thing that happened to me was the pressure to leave my job. I left. I obeyed God. And then I noticed that the anointing increased because I obeyed. Okay. Ah, then I preached. 80 sermons after I left here. Those 80 sermons, oh my. It was an announcement. Are you with me? And from that time, so many people across the world began to listen to me. I said, yeah. Okay. In the city where I am, in the state where I am, the economy of the state is such that it cannot capture the things that God began to do. God took us beyond the economy of the location, such that when the governor came to our building, I gave him the microphone, he said, huh? he forgot himself, he, he didn't know the world was watching him. Huh? That, 
So this thing happened in my territory, and my money is not even in it. And that was good. It was good. He made that statement because people thought it was a government-funded project. Uh, he said, my money is not in it. I was so happy. I said, glory to God. <laughs> Do you know that some... <laughs> you can make impossible things happen in your territory? Tonight, God is going to come. You see, a rain will come upon you. Yes, there is a rain that is going to come upon you because many things are going to shift. You see, if you open your heart tonight, oh my, the energy that it takes to be consistent in the place of prayer until you see a change will come upon your life in the name of Jesus. We are the ones that can change the tempo, change the situation, change the circumstance. Satan is not in control. It's not in control. It's not in control. They try to kill me, but I'm still here. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still here. And I'm more determined than, than I used to be. This encounter with me resolved the issue of determination. If you are still here, I'd like us to take a moment in prayer. You see, the prayer we are praying is that God will do something to you, to do something to me in the next five minutes that will increase your capacity, that will set you on course, on a definite course of migration. A definite course. Oh! On a definite course. Prayer was made without ceasing of the church. And things began to shift. Angels were dispatched. All kinds of things began to happen. Peter thought it was a rescue strategy. He wanted to run out of prison naked. The angel said, hold it. Put on your sandals. They said, hold it. Guard yourself. Throw your robe over your arm. It, it, it's a red carpet reception. It's not a rescue strategy. The angelic activities that are soon to be activated around your life. Oh my God. Oh my God. Simon Colemite. There are things that are opening up. The dimensions that God is unleashing on your life. You are going through a migration by the Spirit of God that is transport, that is transport, that is transport, that is transport, that is taking place. My copilacy. Romela is cobamande. Kuveva vane is cofres keta mantoria. Amaskito bronde caparatus. Rakosiko plaskito con belama. Atai compis cavala mandeli. There's a migration taking place. God is moving you as I speak. There is a movement. There is a movement. The tsunami of shift is coming to take over in the affairs of your life. What might happen might look like a dislocation, but it is so that you can be relocated and brought into the full context of your destiny. I see the hand of God straight forth already. It's straight forth already. Oh God. Like a Simo Ropeskadi. Things will never be the same again. Things will never be the same again. Things will never there are seven significant people in this auditorium. And the hand of God comes already. It comes as I speak already. It's coming stronger already. There are seven people that will be anointed. Seven people will be anointed. His hand will just descend. The migration starts with that anointing. The migration, it starts with that anointing. It's coming, 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 it's coming. There's a migration. There's a shift. There's a shift. The Lord himself, the Lord himself is, is, is involved. He's involved in occasion in this migration. He's in, oh my God. But who say come in it? It can bless God for lamina. Ruka basute mahalatamina. Rukas came in a celi boboria. Ama Marasi compresco for Latua, a caprescov elame, salico palamita, ecopresco for la hasimo, preicos cabaratua. Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for watching. Do well to subscribe, like, share the video to your loved ones so they can receive what God is doing from this platform. You can also follow us on all our social media platforms. We are on Instagram, we are on Facebook. And we are on Twitter. Thank you.